Hello, I'm Timothy Dombeck, and welcome to Advent Episcopal Church in Sun City, West Arizona. We're delighted to have you joining us for our weekly worship service from the Book of Common Prayer. If you're new to our channel, you can watch us through our website, adventaz.org, or our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. We're so glad that you found us, and if you want to see previous services, you can see those through the video vault of our website. Again, that's adventaz.org. If you're looking for a church home, we're delighted to have you here. Our address is found on our website if you want to join us in person, but you're also welcome to be a member by watching online. Either way, we're glad to have you with us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the gift of your time. And now, enjoy the service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave your servant, Argula von Grumbach, a spirit of wisdom and power to love your word and to boldly draw others to its truth, pour out that same spirit upon us, that we, knowing and loving your holy word, may be unashamed of Christ and may not sin against the Holy Spirit that is within us. Amen. <coughs> Please be seated as we turn our attention to the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Judges. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lepidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgments. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abonam, from Kadesh in Nepali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor. Bring 10,000 from the tribe of Natali and the tribe of Zeblon, and I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this evening is Psalm 118. We'll read it in unison. Open for, the, for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer them to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is a marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Bless us who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. 
form a process with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, once again this evening, we have a, a new saint from the um, A Great Cloud of Witnesses um, book of saints that we use now in the Episcopal Church that was approved by General Convention uh, probably about five years ago or maybe seven years ago. I know we're on an odd thing because they had to cancel convention for uh, last year due to COVID, and they just finished convention this year, and it's interesting. They squeezed 10 days into four. Hmm, maybe that's a plan for the future instead of spending all that time at general convention. But this is a woman I never heard before, and what I think is remarkable is in which, the times in which she lived. By the way, it's very interesting the lessons they chose. Uh, for this evening, like building the house on rock, of course, is going to speak to Argula's incredible theological knowledge and her ability to stand up to people and talk about theology with, uh, with leaders and theologians. And for the time in which she lived, this was remarkable for a woman. But the first story, I don't know if you know the, how that story ends of Cicera, but Cicera uh, was uh, delivered into the hands of a woman, and it was a woman named Jael who drove a tent spike through his head. <laughs> That's how he died. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm glad they didn't finish the story, but it is a really remarkable story in Judges. You may want to read it this evening. So uh, this is the biography uh, uh, and the story of a woman named Argula von Grumbach, who was born in 1492. And she was a Bavarian writer and noblewoman who, starting in the early 1520s, became involved in the Protestant Reformation debates then going on in Germany. Now, I'd never heard this before, that there was a woman involved in the debates about the Protestant Reformation, so let's continue to learn. She became the first Protestant woman writer, publishing letters and poems promoting and defending Martin Luther, as well as his co-worker Philip Melanchthon and other Protestant writers. She is most known for directly challenging the University of Ingolstadt's faculty when she wrote a letter to them speaking out against the arrest of a Lutheran student. As one of the few women at the time openly speaking out her views, her writing sparked controversy, controversy and often became <coughs> bestsellers, with tens of thousands of copies of her letters and poems circulating within a few years of their publication. Argula von Grumbach was born as Argula von Stoff near Regensburg in Bavaria, a family, among, in a family who was among the preeminent leaders of the Bav of Bavarian nobility. Argula is thought to have learned to read fluently at a very young age. When she was 10, her father gave her an expensive and beautifully crafted Coburger Bible written in German, despite Franciscan preachers discouraging it, saying scripture would, quote, only confuse her, end quote. <laughs> She became an avid student of the Bible, memorizing much of its contents. In 1515, Argula married Friedrich von Grumbach. He is thought to have had poor health as he died in 1530. With him, Argula had four children, George, Hans-Georg, Gottfried, and Apollonia. 
The only, tri the only child to survive his parents was Gottfried. Argula became a follower of Luther, Martin Luther, and had begun a, a correspondence with him and other similar thinking pro Protestants. Bavarian authorities had forbidden reception of Lutheran ideas at the time, and the city of Ingolstadt enforced that mandate. In 1523, Arsacaeus Seehofer, a young teacher, was arrested for Protestant views and forced to recant. The incident would have occurred quietly, but Argula, outraged over it, wrote what has become her best-known epistle, a letter to the faculty of the university objecting to Seehofer's arrest and exile. The letter urged the university to follow scripture, not Roman traditions. It is also said she had decided to speak out even though she was a woman because no one else would. Her letter, which was turned into a booklet, provoked a huge reaction, greatly angering the theologians and became nearly an overnight sensation. It went through 14 editions in two months and became a bestseller. Argula wrote more letters and copies of, of the first one to other significant figures. Unable to control the spread of her ideas, theologians wanted Argula punished, and her husband lost his position at Dietfurt over the controversy. Argula was also called by many offensive epithets by her critics. Argula wrote poems in response to the slander of her, and she continued corresponding with Luther and other reformers. Argula von Grumbach was highly controversial, shunned by some of her own family, but she also had admirers for her writings. Although her challenges to the university were largely ignored, her efforts to promote her Protestant beliefs unsuccessful, Argula was undeterred, continuing writing pamphlets. She engaged in other exceptional activities in this cause, like traveling alone to Nuremberg, which was unheard of for women at that time, in order to encourage German princes to accept Reformation principles. I think this is a wonderful story, and I'm glad I got to hear about it. And this is a, another reason to give thanks for the work that the church has done in expanding its calendar of saints to include people like Argula von Grumbach, who we remember today. The Litany of Healing is found on the back of your service bulletin, and let us name before God those for whom we desire to pray, particularly Bill, uh, who had surgery today, and Sharon. Are there others? Kathy, Jane, Janie, and Arden. Let us offer our prayers for God's healing, saying, Hear and have mercy. Holy God, Source of health and salvation. Hear and have mercy. Holy and mighty wellspring of abundant life. Hear and have mercy. Holy immortal one, protector of the faithful. Hear and have mercy. Holy Trinity, the source of all wholeness. Hear and have mercy. Blessed Jesus, your holy name is medicine for healing and the promise of eternal life. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, descendant of David, you healed all who came to you in faith. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, child of Mary, you embrace the world with your love. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, divine physician, you sent your disciples to preach the gospel and heal in your name. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, our true mother, you feed us the milk of your compassion. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, son of God, you take away our sins and make us whole. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, eternal Christ, you pr your promised spirit renews our hearts and minds. Hear and have mercy. Grant your grace to heal those who are sick. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Give courage and faith to all who are disabled through illness or injury. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Comfort, relieve, and heal all sick children. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Give courage to all who await surgery. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Support and encourage those who live with chronic illness. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Strengthen those who endure continual pain and give them hope. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Grant the refreshment of peaceful sleep to all who suffer. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Befriend all who are anxious, 
lonely, despondent, or afraid, we pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Befriend all who restore those with mental illness to clarity of mind and hopefulness of heart. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Give rest to the weary and hold the dying in your loving arms. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Help us to prepare for death with confident expectation and hope of Easter joy. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Give your wisdom and compassion to healthcare workers that they may minister to the sick and dying with knowledge, skill, and kindness. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Uphold those who keep watch for the sick. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Guide those who search for the causes and cures of sickness and disease. We pray to you, O God. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, Lamb of God. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, bearer of our sins. Hear and have mercy. Jesus, redeemer of the world. Hear and have mercy. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may triumph over all disease, illness, and grief, and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now at this time, I invite those who wish to receive prayers for healing to come to the altar rail. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. <clears throat> we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please exchange the peace with one another. The offertory sentence is on page two in the right-hand column. Together let us say, all that we are and all that we have comes from God. Let us offer our best to God in thanksgiving, remembering that God loves a cheerful giver. And many thanks to Eldon for being here tonight and for playing. continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on the lower right-hand column of page 2. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you are greatly glorified in the assembly of your saints. All your creatures praise you, and your faithful servants bless you, confessing before the rulers of this world the great name of your only Son. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. And the calling of Israel to be your people in your word, spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. 
On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Argula von Gumbach, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, we give you praise and thanks for this holy communion of the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the pledge of our redemption. And we pray that it may bring us forgiveness of our sins, strengthen our weakness, and everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. <clears throat>